Hey guys, can can everyone hear me clearly? Hey Taifan, nice to see you here again. I can see Wai Chan over here, Christopher. Uh, see some familiar names. Uh, we got Fireflies.ai note taker. Yeah. <laughs> hey Taifan, yeah, nice to see you, man. Right. Oh, I got Mervin. You guys can hear me nice and clear. Awesome. Awesome. Right. I got Navin, very familiar name. Right. Yeah. Who um who is here um not for the first time, right? Uh yeah, Mena, who's how many times have you attended uh this Take Me webinar? Right. If you, you guys can send it in the comment section, that'd be great. Uh, so you know in the comment section, there's this part that says drop down where you can choose um everyone, right? Yeah, so so you can send the message to everyone, not just the host and panelists, everyone else can also see it. Hey Rina, nice to see you, right? Uh oh yeah. Your name is very familiar, Taifan, right? Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Nice to see you attend everything. Um, all right, all right, good stuff, man. I can see a whole bunch of people streaming in, right? Just going to give it another one minute for everyone to come in, right? Oscar, nice to see you. Where are you guys, um, where are you guys tuning in from, right? Uh, which countries are you guys tuning in from? And bon bonus prize for anyone who can guess um, where I am hosting this webinar from, right? All right. Oh, Nepal. Nice. UK. Uh, first time attending webinar. Um, tuning from the Philippines. That's nice. All right. Okay. Navin from Malaysia. Uh, Tefan, maybe. <laughs> maybe. All right. Yeah. Okay. I can see a few people guess. Uh, either you're saying that and tuning in. Oh, yeah. Kong Wai Chan knows that I'm from Singapore. All right. <laughs> okay. No secret there. Yes. And tuning in from Singapore. Right. Um. Um. We got. Swan Yi Ki asking if there's a certificate of attendance. No, there isn't, right? Uh, but in the VIP room, which we should be launching soon, uh, in the Take Mill VIP room, right? Um, we should have a little batch um, that is awarded to people when they um, attend a certain number of webinars, right? That's something exciting to keep your eye on. The marketing team is um, working on the landing page for that. So it should be out pretty soon, right? Dom from Fields, I guess, is that Philippines, All right? Um, okay, David, first time from Nigeria. Sajal from Nepal. Uh, Charity from Nigeria. Um, Derges, right? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you tune in, right? We got a nice, uh, nice group of guys over here, right? Um, right, a nice group of people over here, right? And today's webinar, right, is a little bit of a focus on stop loss and take profit placement. Right. Um, also be touching a little bit on not only the concept but some examples behind it. Right. I I think it's pretty good, right? If you've if you've ever encountered situations where you know the price touches, you know, you're in a trade, price touches your stop loss, right? And then it just reverses uh and it goes in the other direction of a trade. Or you know, price misses your take profit just by that few pips and then reverses, to, you know, uh, towards your entry, right? That is usually more of a case of stop optimizing your stop loss and take profit placement. Clement, good question. How do you invite others to join my training, right? I will show you in a bit, right? There's a, there's a link, right? There's a link. I will, I will show it to, to you guys in a bit. All right. Okay. Now, first things first, right? Um, Disclaimer, everything in this webinar is educational in nature, so nothing should be construed as investment or trading advice. Please do your own little due diligence before you guys trade, all right? Now, there is a link that I want to send you guys to, right? And that link is, yeah, you can head over to take me, uh, no, YouTube Take Me, actually. There is this Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass. Um, not only with me, but it's with my entire team, Jean, Annabelle, Tianning, right? Um, I'm going to paste the message over here, right? So yeah, um, if, uh, if you want to watch the previous webinar, please go attend, uh, go to this playlist and you can watch it in sequential order from the top all the way to the bottom. But the other thing is that um, for those of you guys who are asking, you know, how do you tune in to the other webinars, right? This is the link that you want to go to. Hi, Isaac, nice to see you tune in, right? Yep. This is the link you can go to. What you can do is you can see all the pre, all the upcoming webinars in all the different languages, right? You can just tune into them. All right. Now, um, Navin is asking a very interesting question, right? Is the market manipulated 
so we get our stop loss hit, right? Um, short answer to that is no. We think that there is manipulation, but there is more of like a form of smart money trading. Like there are certain levels where you just want to avoid when it comes to putting your stop losses there, right? Because when you put it there, right, it's uh, that it goes by different terms. One of it is like man magnetic levels, right? Prices tend to be attracted to certain levels, right? And if you happen to put your stop loss in the crosshair, in the crossfire, right, you're going to get stopped out, right? So it's more of um, optimizing your stop loss and take profit placement more than the market manipulation because there's, um, there's no mar market manipulation, right? The Forex market is very, it's a trillion dollar market. It's really, really tough to, ma to manipulate it, right? We're not talking about penny stocks, right? We're not talking about the, you know, the small, uh, the, the small penny stocks or even the small, sorry? Yeah, the meme stocks, right? You're talking about like Squid Coin, you know, those of you guys might remember Squid Coin, right? Or, um, or even some of the crypto, you know, some of the crypto coins, um, the smaller cap crypto coins out there. Those, yeah, you know, you heard of the term will, right? A will can come in, it can manipulate it, right? But you're talking about the Forex market, you know, literally the currency that is being used by millions and millions and millions of people, right? It is really, really tough to manipulate, right? Almost impossible. So it's not so much of market manipulation looking at, it's rather the optimization of your stop loss and take profit levels. You know, if you can do it properly, you know, you can um, optimize it quite well. Yeah, you can avoid getting stopped out, all right? So I do want to touch on a couple of things, all right? The, the, um, today's webinar, there'll be two hosts. One, uh, the first is me, right? My name is Desmond Leong, right? Um, well, yes, it's we're doing take profit and stop loss placement. So my, my brain just stopped for a while there, right? Yes, take profit and stop loss placement, optimize, optimizing it today, right? Um, right, run the award-winning research firm, Everest Fortune Group. You know, we're finalists for best FX research 2019, 2020, 2021, and best equity research for 2020 and 2021. So we usually work with the major financial institutions out, out there, telling them where the markets are heading. But we now have a special partnership with Tickmill where we are bringing you guys the good stuff the juicy stuff, you know, the stuff that will take your trading to the next level, okay? And our, the next host, right, who we'll be seeing in just about like maybe 10 minutes, right, is Annabelle, right? So she is part of the uh, team here at Everest Fortune Group and you might have seen some of her previous webinars previously, right? So she'll be diving in a little bit deeper, right? She shows you the examples, a lot of the examples in optimizing your take profit and stop loss placement, right? Please don't hold back when you're asking uh, questions, right? Hey, Arky Bong, nice to see you here, man, right? <laughs> sorry, sorry, just, uh, yeah, so I, I always see Arky Bong around the place, right? So it's nice to see him tune in here, right? Hope you enjoy today's session, all right? So now, without further ado, let's jump in into the webinar, right? Um, a few things that I want to touch on, right? The agenda for today. And I'm going to pick my handy dandy pen here. Right. Yeah, our agenda for today. You know, why stop loss and take profits are important. A lot of people sometimes, you know, they treat they treat the stop loss and the take profit as an afterthought. Right. You know, they what they do is they 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 they, they spend so much time looking for the entry, you know, that once they pick the entry, you know, they just randomly like throw in a stop loss and take profit. Right, it's almost an afterthought, right? So we're just gonna to touch on why it's very important, right? Uh, we're looking at the anatomy of a trade, you know, things that dive deeper than just your entry, stop loss and take profit. We're looking at what's the problem with a fixed take profit and what's the problem with a fixed stop loss. We'll be introducing some dynamic take profit and stop loss placements and the concept of risk allocation, all right? Now, um, this is a very, very interesting part here, right? Many of you guys, right? On baby pips on Forex Factory, right? Maybe you found some trading strategy out there that says, you know, when a moving average crossover happens, right? When a when a double bottom happens or head and shoulder pattern happens, you know, you put a stop loss of 100 pips and take profit of 100 pips, right? There is a problem when you're using a fixed amount of stop loss and take profit, right? We'll be diving that, uh, we'll be diving into that later, right? If you currently use a fixed stop loss and take profit, Right, that is one of the reasons, right? You know, just a, a little bit of foreshadowing here. That's one of the reasons why you get stopped out 
uh, more often than not, or rather, you know, you notice that price touches your stop loss, reverses, or misses your take profit and reverses, right? It's all about the fine tuning, right? It's hard enough to trade Forex. It's high enough to be profitable in Forex, right? So the last thing we want to do is to um, neglect some of these really, really important principles that really put the, you know, help you, if you're right on a trade, at least let it hit your take profit, right? So we'll be touching on, on that in a bit. Okay, so this is just some of the things that I want to touch on, you know, the importance of stop loss and take profit levels. The first one is risk management, all right? This really, really important thing over here, right? In short, yeah, you know, identify, and analyze, accept, and mitigate uncertainty, meaning, right, the last thing we want to do is, you know, to take a trade and, you know, take a trade and don't put a stop loss, Right? I know, yeah, usually it's the case of people refusing to put stop loss, right? They're like, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'm not sure how many of you guys have done it, right? You're, um, you're like, all right, you know, I'm just going to keep my eye on that trade, right? I don't have a stop loss, but I have a stop loss in my mind. You know, a lot of people like do that. They're like, I have a stop loss in my mind. You know, when price reach that level, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust my stop loss. I'm going to close it out, right? Now, if you were trading, right? If you're trading, Right, you'll notice that there will always be this uncertainty. You know, this thought at the back of your head. You know, you could be you could be doing work, you could be traveling, you could be eating, right? And be thinking, oh shucks, you know, is my position, you know, has price reached my stop loss? Right. And you know, you, you keep needing to like flip open your phone, flip open your MT4 and just see, oh yeah, I know it's, it's haven't reached there yet. Right. And even if it does, you know. At the time when it hits, reaches your stop loss, your mental stop loss, do you have the discipline to go in there and you know close it off? You know that is that is the thing when it comes to putting your stop loss and take profit levels. You know you 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 control you manage your risk. You know that if I forget, if I miss it out, if I happen to be sleeping, if I happen to be in the middle of a presentation, I know that if price reaches my stop loss, I get stopped out. My risk is controlled. Okay, so that's an important thing with stop loss. It allows you to actually go about your day, right? Knowing that you're in the worst case scenario, you, you get stopped out, how much of your account is going, you're going to lose for the day. Okay, next thing, it prevents emotional trading, right? There is a popular saying, you know, it's like, you fail to plan, you plan to fail. It's very cliche, but it's cliche because there is a truth in it, right? If you do not put a stop loss, right? And many people, I've seen them, you know, have mental stop loss, right? They feel like they can just go in there and when, um, when the market is at their mental stop loss, they're just going to put their, uh, they're just going to close off the position. What happens more often than not is that they hold on, they hesitate. Even if you hesitate for that one second, that is emotional trading. Whether you hesitate for that one second, imagine like your entry is over here, right? You expect prices to go up. Your take profit is over here, Okay. Your stop loss is over here. If prices come all the way down and it touches your mental stop loss, right? Your mental stop loss. A lot of you guys would be like, yeah, you know, I'll just close it off. But the moment you just hesitate for one second, thinking that price might bounce up, you know, just so that, you know, it might, you don't get stopped out. That is emotional trading. Okay. And there's only one <laughs> there's only one place where emotional trading gets you, right? And that's the grave of, you know, um, revenge trading, the, the grave of accounts that get blown up. It might, you might get lucky once, you know, you price bounce, right? You like, phew, you know, my Jedi senses, you know, help me get out of the trade. You know, I was able to avoid getting stop loss, right? Um, I'm, I was able to avoid getting stopped out. That you know, place on your emotions. So next time that happens, you know, you're like, yeah, yeah, you know, I previously, I used my Jedi senses, you know, to avoid getting stopped out. Now it's there again. What am I going to do? I'm going to hold on to it, right? You don't, you, you, you let your emotions come in and if prices just plummet, right? You know, it goes lower and lower and you'd be like, oh man, I should have just closed it off. Then it starts going lower and lower and lower and then you're taken on a roller coaster, right? Right? And before you know it, what you initially wonder a risk of 1% of your account ends up being 10% of your account, right? So important of a stop loss level, it instills discipline, right? It tells you that, hey, when you're wrong, you're wrong, right? Be a man, right? When you're wrong, just admit you're wrong, okay? That's the thing about stop losses. Lastly, is the important concept of risk to reward, right? So many 
times I might ruffle a few feathers here, but I've seen Telegram traders and Instagram traders. I call them Telegram and Instagram traders because what they do is they put a, a nice picture of a Lamborghini on Instagram. They say that and you scroll, you know, a few pictures. You're like, oh, look at me. I made 100 pips take profit, 100 pips take profit. Now, 100 pips, if you enter here, right, if your take profit was 100 pips, okay? If your take profit from your entry was 100 pips, right? And your stop loss was your stop loss was 500 pips. You have a terrible trading strategy. But what most Telegram and Instagram traders like to do is they like to show you this part here. Look at me, you know, I made 100 pips while risking 500 pips. So if I get one wrong trade, it wipes out five of my trades, five of my winning trades. A lot of people like to do that. So one word of caution is that when you see Instagram and Telegram traders who only talk about the profit that they make, you know, they always like to show you screenshots of their MT4 account on their mobile. They never ever show you how much they risk on it, right? Just a, the number of pips of profit that, that they make, right? If you see that, run like the wind, okay? <laughs> run to the hills, right? This guy is a scammer, okay? I'm just putting it very bluntly there because, you know, I've seen too many people get scammed in this kind of situations, right? Because the important thing about take profit levels is that when you, if you're looking, if you're only looking at take profit levels, right? You're only looking at the upside. You never look at the downside right? Using stop losses and take profit helps you exercise the concept of not only the reward that you're getting, but also the risk. You know, what's the risk to what ratio? You can have a hundred pip, you know, I can have a trading strategy that has 10 pip take profit and it can make me more money than this hundred pip um, strategy. If my stop loss was, you know, 10 pip take profit, 5 pip stop loss. This gives me a risk to reward of 2 is to 1. This gives me, this one here gives me a reward of 1 is to 5. Okay? You can see 2 is to 1 is bigger than 1 is to 5, almost like 20, 10 times. Yes, 10 times is the, yeah, 10 times is the answer. <laughs> right? Yeah, 10 times. Okay? So I don't need 100 pip take profit to be profitable. 10 pips is enough. The proper risk to reward is what you want to be looking at. And the only way you can get proper risk reward is to have exercise stop loss, uh, to use both stop loss and take profits. Okay? Some of the ways that you can, you know, calculate stop loss and take profit levels, right? Um, we'll be showing you some of these examples. Where's my mouse? Oh, is one of it is trend lines, right? One of the support resistance levels. Right. What do I mean by trend lines? You know, it's a little bit unique. Let me see if I can pull up an example over here. Like a trend line. Okay. Um, hmm. <laughs> okay. A trend line. For example. Give me a second, almost there. Okay, so for example, if you're playing a bullish move, all right, if you're playing a bullish move, right, what I'm gonna do, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna look for this. Wait, where's my bar replay? Okay, this move over here, right? We're just playing the move up here, right? I could have, I could have, right? I could have a stop loss. I could have a stop loss, you know, that follows the trend line, right? So initially, maybe it's over here. Right, so as price kind of, give it a second. Come on. Okay, so if my stop loss was over here, ah, shit. Uh, sorry. Uh, if my stop loss was over here, you know, and as price kind of inches up, you know, you can slowly uh, move your price, your stop loss uh, uh, along with the trend line, right? So as it goes up, as it goes up, as it goes up, as it goes up, you know, you kind of just inch it along the trend line because you're, you are essentially riding the trend, okay? So let's see how this kind of works out, you know? It, it goes closer, it goes closer to here, right? Because But your view is if price touches, you know, price breaks the trend line, right? I can, um, I can, I will close off my trade. So there you go, you know, in this case, right, instead of using something like a moving average, 
right? If we use like a moving average, maybe a 100 moving average, right? So in, so in cases where someone is using a 100 moving average as a trailing stop loss, right? Uh, a trend line in this case will help you get stopped up faster, you know, locking in more of your profits than using a, something like a moving average. There are people who also use the Ichimoku, right? They wait for price to break past the Ichimoku cloud over here. So for example, there you go. The next bar, if price breaks this Ichimoku cloud, then they close it off. There are a few methods, right? There are a few methods when it comes to using um, trend lines, using moving averages, like what I'm showing you over here, you know, using moving averages, using Ichimoku, right? Using support and resistance, right? To calculate your stop loss and take profit level. This doesn't always have to be like a fixed stop loss and take profit level, okay? Now I can see a question by Lucci, right? Asking, um, what is the time frame for that scenario? This happens to be a question that I get asked pretty often. You know, what is the time frame? Let me tell you that the time frame really doesn't matter. Okay, the time frame doesn't matter because when you're taking a time frame on a four-hour chart, right, you should be obeying what you're looking at, uh, what the indicators are telling you for the four-hour chart. Let me let me give you some context. If I was looking at a four-hour chart, right, I'm going to delete everything over here. And I was looking at the moving at the at the Ichimoku cloud, right? This Ichimoku cloud is nice, right? You know, I'm seeing it bounce over here, bounce over here, right? And maybe, damn it, every time I try to, um, probably over here. Yeah, if I'm using the Ichimoku, the Ichimoku on the four-hour chart, notice that, okay, see, now price is right at the edge of the Ichimoku, right? It's testing that level right about there. This looks good on the four-hour chart, but if I change it to the one-hour chart, it will have broken way a long time ago. You can see the one-hour chart is broken already. The indicator on the four-hour chart is, of course, different from the indicator on the one-hour chart. The most important thing is, which time frame are you using to trade? If you're using the four hour time frame to trade, that means that you're using the sensitivity of the four hour charts. You're using the moving averages that you apply, you're using the Ichimoku that you apply, using the stochastic that you apply. So you need to obey it. Okay? So the time frame really doesn't matter. Rather, if you are trading on a time frame, stick to it. The last thing you want to do is if you're trading on the four hour, then you jump in to the five minute chart, right, to find a certain pattern. Because you know, uh, you get you 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 jump in deeper and deeper and deeper, and like, oh man, you know, I if you think about it, what you're doing on a five minute chart is not gonna affect your four hour chart at all, right? It's so far removed. So don't get don't get too caught up in this whole um concept of multi-time frame. There is a time to use it, and there's a time not to use it, right? Uh, here at AFG, what we usually do is we go one time frame higher right? Just to get a gauge of things, right? We don't try to jump one time frame lower, two time frame lowers. That just gets, makes things really, really messy, okay? Um, but I do not want to digress too much, right? But this is some of the methods to calculate your stop loss and take profit levels. The last one is a parabolic SAR, right? This is more of trailing stop losses, right? The last few are actually trailing stop losses, which we'll be touching on on part four of this webinar series, where we go into uh, not only... Um, a stop loss and take profit placement, but trailing stop losses and idea invalidations. Okay. Now, um, the anatomy of trade. Let me see. I don't. Um, I know there's one part of that I want to touch on. Right uh, before I head it over to Annabelle. Right when it comes to a trade, most people think it's just the entry that you're looking at, but the truth is that there's an entry, there's a stop loss, there is a take profit. Okay, within before the take profit, there is a partial profit. Okay, before the partial profit, there's usually a break even. Before the stop loss, there's usually the idea and validation. Beyond the take profit, there might be a trailing, uh, not trailing, sorry, it's over here, trailing loss, uh, trailing stop loss, right? Trailing stop loss over here. So the concept of uh, anatomy of a trade is not only an entry. Not only a take profit, not only a stop loss, right? When you go into advanced session next week, the week after, sorry, we're going to touch on break even, we're going to touch on partial profit, we're going to touch on idea and validation, we're going to touch on trailing stop losses. 
when you know how to respect the entire spectrum of um, the anatomy of a trade, you notice that you will be very much at ease when you take a trade because you would have put your entry, stop loss, take profit. And you know that when price reaches a certain level, you're going to put a break even, you're going to get a partial profit there. If it reaches a certain level, you're going to get idea and validate. You have your plan all planned out. It takes, the, it takes the opposite spectrum of if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Because in this case, you really are planning uh, to succeed, right? In every single scenario, when it goes for you and when it goes against you. We'll be covering more of that in the rest of the webinars, right? In, the trip, in our advanced trip management webinar series um, over the next few weeks, all right? Now, I've <laughs> eaten up quite a bit of time into Annabelle's uh, presentation, right? So I'll be handing over the time to Annabelle. She'll, take, she'll be taking you through the rest of the webinar. We'll be looking at uh, ideal, optimal, stop loss, take profit placement. And she will also be showing you um, a lot of examples on it. So please do not hold back and ask her your questions, all right? Now, without uh, further ado, <laughs> uh, over to you, Annabelle. Hi guys. Can you guys see and hear me clearly? Hi Jake. <coughs> hi, hi. Okay. This is probably like the second or third session that I I have with you guys. Okay, I'll be continuing with the um, session about um, take profit and stop loss placement. Okay, so <clears throat> just now Desmond has covered the anatomy of trade, right? Because um, it is as important as your, you know, your take profit and stop loss is as important as your entry levels because most of the time when we enter a trade, most of us are just, you know, we place more, emphasis and effort on our entry right we take a lot of time analyzing the charts and then we just enter um without forgetting i mean forgetting our take profit and stop loss placement so like he has mentioned there are a lot of um different parts to the anatomy of trade given the entry the stop loss take profit there is also the break even Okay, um, the trailings, stop losses, and etc. Just now he has mentioned. So, when it comes to taking profit or stop loss, how do you guys actually do it? Do you set percentages or um, do you do the risk to reward ratio? Let me know in the comment section. So for us, um, what we do here is the ideal and optimal stop loss and take profit placement is okay. Most times your your trade or the position will come to the major resistance area where you draw all your trend lines, right? So at this area, this is where all your um, fights or all your commotion starts. Okay, so for example, if I'm taking a um, a long position, okay? okay, let's do short. So for example, if I'm doing a short position, let me erase. Give me one second. Okay, so for example, if I'm doing a short position here, okay, I took a short. How would you guys draw your take profit and stop loss? Most of the time, people will actually draw it along the key levels, right? Because this is where all the commotion happens and people tend to like to draw their lines here. But let's say if you are going to draw your take profit levels here, you might have missed it because prices might actually stop here and bounce off, correct? So what we suggest is, what we do here, is we usually take profit before your major resistance level, right? And if you are going to put your stop loss, always put slightly beyond. Okay, for example, 
if I'm going to take a trade here, a shot, I will have a couple more examples later, but um, I'm just briefly telling you guys how it works. So if you put your take profit exactly on the resistance area, it might be dangerous because price might just bounce off slightly before and hit your stop loss, which is very risky. So you tend to just want to give up maybe the one pip or two pips, okay, just for the 90% gain, right, on your take profit. And the reason why um, we put the stop loss slightly beyond is because there might be a lot of commotions happening here and you just want to have that space as a buffer, right? Okay, let's look at some examples. Okay, I'll go to this first. So for stop loss and take profit placement. So we have identified a nice support level here, which is the green line. Okay, this is where you will draw your support level, correct? This will be the line where you draw your support level. Okay. So we buy thinking that price will go, go all the way up since it's a bullish trend. So since that there's a breakout here, I would have bought, right? So our strategy has a fixed stop loss of a 100 pips. So for example, if you put a fixed stop loss of 100 pips here, okay, which is slightly above your support line. Okay, this is your stop loss, yeah? Okay, so imagine if you were to put your stop loss above your resistance line here. It would have stopped you out of your position if your price reverses. On the other hand, if you put your stop loss beyond your resistance level, it would have went up. Okay, that's another slide that is not included here. It would have came here to the magnetic zone, which is the, okay, what we call it is a magnetic zone because usually price tend to be drawn towards these levels where all your commotions happen, right? This is where all the fights happen. So when prices come here, the magnetic zone, and it bounces off, your stop loss, you are not stopped out yet because there's still buffer. Oops. There's still buffer here. There's still some space for you to breathe, right? So what happened here is it touches the magnetic zone and it bounces off to hit my take profit. So for take profit levels, usually we do not want to go to the commotion level because it's very risky. We will want to take profit slightly before just to be sure that you pocket the 90%, correct? Okay, and maybe let me just talk about um, the problem with stop loss and take profit, okay? So the problem with um, take profit, uh, fix take profit and stop loss, just now Desmond has mentioned, is some of the channels or webinars, they actually tell you to take profit of 100 pips or um, stop loss of 100 pips once your EM, your moving average um, crosses a certain area. But the reason why it's risky is because of this. Okay, So for example, if this was the fixed 100 pips that you are talking about for your stop loss, okay, which is above your resistance, uh, your support level, it's very risky because prices are always attracted to this magnetic zone. Okay, so this is the um, risk that we see in fixed take profit stop loss. Okay, you do not want to be so rigid as to always follow what the, the channels or the mentor says. Okay, you always have to follow what the market is actually telling you as well on the go, right? Because um, prices always move. So you have to be flexible in the sense that you have to adapt and mitigate risk when market tells you otherwise. Okay. okay. So remember, um, when there is a 
strong resistance area or strong support area, you always take profit before. Okay, it's depending on whether you're taking a long position or a short position, right? Because this is for long, usually take before. But if it's a short position, it will take slightly above um, the key level. Okay, so it's depending on whether you are taking a long or a short position. Just take, the, take your profit before the resistance area or the magnetic zones. Okay. Okay, now another example. So right here, we have identified a strong resistance level. Okay, the points touch once, touch twice, and most likely if the price are coming up, it will touch it three times, okay, depending on where the market is headed. So this is clearly a strong resistance area where I have drawn, where price has reacted off twice. So imagine if you have a fixed <coughs> take profit of 100 pips, which is above, okay, which is above, slightly above. Okay, let me just write take profit here, which is slightly above your resistance line. Okay, what happens next is this is the fixed 100 pips that the program or the channel or the mentorship told you that, okay, um, when prices react off this level, you should take a, a 100 pips of take profit and a 100 pips of stop loss. For example, so what happens next is price actually reacted nicely, okay, bullish, bullish, came here. You think that it will still go further. So you are maybe probably at uh, 90 pips now, but then there's still this 10 pips that you're looking for, correct? Where the channel tells you, okay, you have to take the full 100 pips. What happens here is prices came here, reverse. Okay, this is where you will panic, correct? Okay. Wait, let me erase. Okay, usually if it comes here, people will be very hopeful that they can take the full 100 pips. Okay, since it's only a 10 pip more. So people tend to wait. And when price reverses, okay, to back to this bearish candle, people start to panic. So right here, you probably already lose 30 pips. Okay, correct. And then when there is a bullish candle, you will still hope that okay, maybe it will come up. And then you lose another 50 pips, for example. So all in all, you only made, made 10 pips instead of 90 pips. So my point here is don't be so rigid to as have to always put your take profit to a fixed level of 100 pips or a fixed percentage. Okay, You have to see where the market is headed as well, or all the new information that the market is telling you. So the key point is also to always take profit before the resistance level. You don't want to wait till it comes to this fighting zone or where the bulls and the bears are, are in a commotion. You, know? you, you just want to take profit before, just get out before anything happens. Okay. Yeah, so if we place your take profit level slightly before the key resistance area, it would have been a very profitable trade, okay? So the lesson here is don't blindly follow a fixed take profit target just because a forum tells you. So always look at the charts, always look at what the information and the news are telling you. Okay. Um, okay. So this is another example of the take profit placement. Let's see. Okay, big swing. Okay, this is this will be the resistance level that I will place because it's the previous swing high. Okay, we are in a long position. Okay, seems to have created a double bottom or a triple bottom here. Okay, came up. Okay. People will tend to feel that um, prices will come to this level to test again. It is true because this is the magnetic area, right? Um, 
but you always have to keep a look out on what the prices are doing. So don't, don't be so fixated on the fixed take profit. Okay, always take profit, profit before your key resistance area. So for example, if we took a long here, this would have been a very, very profitable trade. You don't have to be greedy to take the full percentage, okay? So price reverses before the big resistance. Yeah, okay. A few pips right here. Okay, you just want to um, get away or you just want to take profit and um, move on to your next trade. Okay. So imagine if you don't take here and you are um, waiting for your full take profit level here. So when price reverses, you will always think that there is a possibility that it might come up. So you keep waiting and waiting until this level when it's down already 50% of your original um, take profit level and then you panic and you, you give up your trade here. So instead of a full 90%, um, you only probably gain a 40% here. Okay. So just leave the 10% behind. Always take profit before a major resistance level. Okay. So the lesson learned here is always place your take profit before key support and resistance. Okay. This is the same. Uh, these are the same slides. I think we'll skip that. Okay. So what is a dynamic take profit placement? Okay. What we mean here is, um, instead of just using your support and resistance levels, right? which I have shown you the previous times, okay, this will be your take profit, always before, and then your stop loss is usually be below, beyond, okay? Okay, instead of using just um, stop loss and, uh, I mean, sorry, instead of just using your support and resistance level, dynamic Placement also means that you can use other indicators like your, um, in this instance, we are using the fit levels um, for example purposes, okay? Okay, so what we are seeing here is that I am looking, for example, for a short entry here, okay? Okay, since price has broken here, I'm looking for a short entry with my stop loss place here and my take profit level place here. Okay. So this is what we are aiming for. I think this is a, let me see. If I'm not wrong, this should be 78.6. Okay. We are looking for an entry level at this um, Fibonacci, 78.6 if I am correct. Okay, 78.6 um, Fibonacci retracement level. Okay, so entry, it has triggered my entry level right here. Okay, and it looks like it has rejected, price has rejected this area many times. Okay, and it's pulling back, which is in the direction of my position. And, okay, let's see. Um, can you guys tell me if let's say um, we are in a short position here, where would you take profit? Could you place your take profit at the point of your swing low? Would you put, okay, let's name it A, B, or maybe this level. Here, level here. See. Where would you guys place your take profit levels? Okay, given a normal situation, if I'm a beginner to trading, I would actually put my um, take profit at A. Okay, a standard answer would be A because that is my previous swing low and we know that prices tend to come to these magnetic levels to, um, to test again, correct? 
But what we mean by dynamic placement is that if I draw a Fibonacci projection forward, hey, I realize that it tells me that this is my 78.6% projection level. This is, uh, if you guys miss out any um, Fibonacci uh, webinars, you can visit the link or the Thick Meal website under Fibonacci, where we have a series of webinars that we teach uh, Fibonacci levels. Okay, so for projection wise, it tells me that, hey, uh, I'm at a 78.6% projection level here. So instead of putting my take profit at 84.668, I actually moved it up to my 78.6 projection level. Okay, I shifted it up slightly, which is which, which also follows our logic of taking profit before um, the resistance level, correct? So it actually touched my 78.6 nicely and reverses to my stop loss. Okay, and also notice that uh, for stop loss wise, always put it slightly above. Okay, yeah, so the point being here, is that dynamic stop loss and take profit placement by using Fibonacci. Uh, usually we will use the projection level, but you can use other indicators like your extension or extensions as well. So this actually helped me a lot. Um, instead of putting my take profit below, this is the exact level where it bounced off and I have taken my full profit here. Okay, so remember, always take profit before. and um, you can use indicators like your uh, Fibonacci tool to help you, to assist you. Yeah. Okay. For stop loss placement, it's the same thing. What we see here is we are looking for an entry. Um, we take profit here and our stop loss being here. So what, what, <clears throat> what happens here is there is a the reason for the entry level is because it's a 100% projection and we are looking for a short since it's a um, downward trend, okay? So right here, what we did was um, the entry was, my position was triggered here and what we did here was we drew a Fibonacci retracement tool. Wait, give me one second. What we did here is we draw the Fibonacci levels and we notice that there is a minus 27.2 expansion. Right? And then it coincides with what we always have said to put your stop loss above your resistance level. So this was the resistance level that we were looking at here. If I do not know, or if I were a beginner, this is where I would usually put my stop loss. You know, we have, be, we have been through this stage before. Usually we'll put our stop loss and take profit levels at the resistance area. But what we are teaching you now is you have to put your stop loss beyond or above your resistance level. Okay, so what, this Fibonacci tool helped me is to identify and define exactly where I should put my stop loss further, okay? So this is my expansion levels and I have moved my stop loss from A to B. So what happened was, since we know that this is a retracement zone, you want to put it slightly above it instead of on it as well, because this is where the prices might touch this level and reverse, okay? These are all the retracement levels. So you have to be careful with them. Uh, place it slightly beyond them, okay? Because my Fibonacci told me that, hey, there's a 20, negative 27.2% um, retracement level here where my price might be attracted to and bounce off. So you have to be careful. Place your stop loss above. 
So what happened here was it really came to this level and reacted off. Okay. So far, if you have you guys have any question, uh let me know. Let me read some of the questions here. Okay, please share us the link about Fibome. Okay, I will cut and paste the link here later on. Um what currency pair is that? Okay, this one, I am not too sure which currency pair because this is just an example and it might not, uh, it doesn't matter which currency it is because we are just showing you the example on how we use a Fibonacci level to help take profit and um, redefine the levels. Can I see the web? Okay, I'll cut and paste later right here. Uh, okay, okay, let's move on. Okay, so for a risk allocation wise, um, what we mean by that is usually when you uh, place your RR, your risk to reward, what, what would be an ideal um, risk allocation that you put? Let me know if you guys put between 1 to 3, 5%, 10%, all in, or what was the percentage that you guys allocate for risk? Okay, most of your answered one to three percent. Yes, it's very common. I think it'll be usually it'll be between these two. Okay, there's rarely this is the rarest. Okay, or oh, some of you don't put at all as well. Okay, it happens. Okay, I see a lot of one to three. Okay, there's also lesser than one. Yeah, it's normal. It's all depending on your risk reward, right? Okay, so. Risk allocation. If I were to give you a thousand dollars right now, right, and ask you to bet on this roulette, all of us have seen the roulette table before. So I will ask you to I give you a thousand dollars and I ask you to bet on um black, for example. How much would you actually put to to bet on black winning? Would you risk the full one thousand dollars? Because it's free. Would you put hundred dollars? That is ten percent. Ten dollars. Two hundred dollars. How much would you risk? Okay, given that you are given a thousand dollars. Okay, I see fifty dollars, thirty dollars. Okay, all within the range of one to three percent, right? Okay, but if I change the roulette table to thirty-two black instead. Would your answer have changed? Would you put all in? All in. I would do that. Or would you put the same as before? $10 or $5? Okay, I see very different answers. Okay, but most of us, yeah, most of us would actually put most of the money here because the odds are very good, all right? So my point being here is that for risk allocation, um, okay, the standard size will be usually 1% to 5%, depending on what's your risk appetite. But the point being here is that if my setup is extremely good and the odds favor me so well like this, I would increase my, I would increase my risk allocation which is very logical because my risk reward will be higher. All right? So the point being, if your setup is extremely good, you have all your Fibonacci levels, you have a confluence zone, your um, stochastic, your RSI, your Ichimoku cloud, all tells you that, hey, you know, uh, USDJPY is going to reverse. I would put maybe more, double, double up, 10%. Okay? It's all depending on your setup for your risk allocation. Okay. Okay, lot sizes. So for those of you who are using MT4, um, you have to key in um, the lot sizes by yourself. And what we see here is, okay, for example, account size, 50,000, the currency pair that you are trading, and then you have to calculate what is your risk level. So for most of us, if you are between one to three, this is the amount that you risk based on a $50,000 account. 
and then you come here to um to place your stop loss and your take profit levels okay so for stop loss wise imagine if you're putting a 50 pip stop loss a 0.1 lot is $50 and one lot is $500, which is 1% of the account. So what is being said here is how much you risk actually affects the lot size you trade. So if you do not know how to calculate your lot sizes, you can log on to um, websites. Like um, you can just Google it. For example, let me see if I can find it. Okay, so for example, if you... There are a lot of websites that does it. Calculation of lot sizes. Because for MP4 users, you have to key in the exact size. And if you don't, do not know, you can go to, okay, for example, baby pips. Okay, let's try. Let's see whether I can find the calculator. Yeah, okay, this one. Just go to any one of it. Okay, okay USD, account balance, 10,000. Okay, for example, imagine if you were to risk only 1%, your stop loss 50, okay, 50 pips, currency pair, euro, yes, okay, it is fine. Okay, so this is the amount that you are risking and this is the standard lot size, okay? So if you do not know how to calculate, you can just um, come to baby pips and you can key in all the details here, okay? Okay. Okay, so um, this is a 50 pip stop loss, 90 pip take profit. And this is a 20 pip stop loss and 36 pip take profit. Which one do I make more? Is it A or is it B? This one looks like it, it has made me a lot of money, right? I mean, 90 pip take profit. Let me know in the comment section, which one do I make more? Do I make more in A or do I make more in B? Okay, I have some answers. Some say A. Okay. So your risk to reward is 50. And then here is... If you do the basic calculation, let me try. Both actually give you the same answer. Okay. If you divide accordingly, actually, it's the same. They make me the same amount. Okay. The same uh, R to R. So what we wanted to say is not about the number of pips you made, it's about the risk um, to reward of your trade. As Desmond has mentioned at the right at the start of the uh, webinar of the session where he say that if there are a lot of traders that tells you that they make 100 pips, but actually maybe they have a 600 pip stop loss, right? 100 pip take profit, and then 600 pips stop loss, that doesn't make sense at all, okay? So it's not about the number of pips you made, but rather the R to R that you have, okay? Okay, let me just um, cut the, yeah, it's the session. Uh, okay, for fit levels, yeah. Okay, so for those of you who missed out on the fit levels, uh, you can rewatch on YouTube or you can come to this, our past webinars. Wait, let me check it out. It should be here. Okay, it should be here. You know, my, I will just direct you guys to um, our YouTube channel then. Okay, let me cut and paste. Okay, can you guys see? Okay. Okay, so I've, I've,
yeah, I have pasted in uh, this, the past, the YouTube channel where we have all the previous webinars recorded. So you, if you guys missed out any of it, you can go there and take a look. Okay. Okay, if you want to view the recordings, you can go to YouTube and check it out. It's all uploaded there. Um, okay, so this will be the end of my session today. I hope you guys have learned um, something from us. Okay, do let me know if you have any questions in the next session and I will see you guys soon. Take care.